So well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to march ahead uh, towards our next session as well. Uh, but on that note, let's keep those tweets coming using hashtag ScreenAge. As I'd already mentioned, uh, most innovative tweet will also walk away with some exciting prizes. Uh, we're going to be announcing the winners over the course of time during our next set of sessions. So keep those tweets coming using hashtag ScreenAge. Well, on that note, let's uh, march ahead and invite our next speaker for the day. He, in fact, is an accomplished marketing leader with more than 15 years of experience in brand consulting sp uh, sphere. And he will also be sharing with us about how or why mobile-first approach is the way to go or to connect with the new age consumers. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us the marketing head of Uber India. Please put your hands together to welcome on stage Mr. Sanjay Gupta. This? Okay, cool. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very quick intro. I have about 17 years of work experience. A lot of it was in consumer goods, uh, some of it in e-commerce, and then probably my most interesting stint, which is the current stint at Uber. What I'm going to do is just take you through over the next half an hour a model that can enable us to engage with our audiences, especially the millennials, in this new environment. So first and foremost, I think it's the most exciting time to be a marketer today. Uh, the rules of marketing are getting rewritten. And you, me, and all of us have an opportunity to, to rewrite these rules. And I think if you look at how, for how long marketing has existed, there are very few moments like this where you get to redefine everything that's written. So find it an exciting time to be a marketing person. So the framework that I'm going to use to build this engagement really resides on three pieces, uh, three pieces which haven't changed over the course since we know marketing, but how we do it is going to change dramatically. The first one is choice. You know, everything starts with multiple options with consumers looking to evaluate and then choosing you. Moves to advocacy, where, or moves to uh, habit, where they start choosing you every time they choose that service. But the real joy is when they start championing your cause, your usage, and your brand. And that's what happens with advocacy. So let me take you through a framework that uh, helps build this. Just seeing if this works. Perfect. So the role of brand, as I mentioned earlier, hasn't changed much, right? It is to simplify. Uh, it is to simplify. It is to abdicate the responsibility of thinking that if I choose this brand, things are going to go right. I look at it in terms of food, fashion, mobile, anything that you may consume. You want the brand to simplify your choice. What's changed is that we live in a very overstimulated environment. Uh, the number of things that compete for our attention are only going up. And the clutter around the world is only increasing. So I remember when I was uh, uh, in media 10 years back, uh, the conversation was we used to have so many TV channels, and now there are so many more TV channels. Today we're in a space where we're saying TV is a small proponent of what the consumer consumes. And this is only going to increase. So the real challenge is how do we keep maintaining what the brand does, which is to simplify, only in this context now, which is overcluttered and overstimulated. So this is. Uh, this is the framework. I think what's important for us is to move away from uh, preference, which is to say that my product is better or my advertising is better, to relevance, which says that this is the right product for you at the right point in time. And if you look at uh, a lot of the marketing conversations today, it's not about whether A is better than B. It's whether A is the most relevant option for me today at this point in time. And some of the things that help build that is one, uh, moving from choice to advocacy. I'm just going to repeat it once so that everybody gets it. Start with multiple options, uh, evaluate multiple options, and then win on proof points. Uh, this is something that is true across industries. Moves to being the preferred option every time. And I think what uh, mobile does for us over here is that because it's so omnipresent, if you're able to make usage of your product easier, if you're able to reduce the cognitive load of losing your product, more and more consumers will use it more frequently. And that's really the habit part of it. How do we increase uh, the, or reduce the cognitive load and increase the ease of usage? It finally moves to advocacy, where when the consumer interacts with your product, they experience joy. And they're the ones who champion your cause. So really for us, it's about how do you move from choice to habit to advocacy. Why is this important today? Uh, so everybody knows the human attention span is dwindling. I experience it personally. I always feel myself looking at multiple screens, doing different things at the same point in time. 
And uh, every time I speak to consumers or every time I speak to other people, I see them experiencing the same thing. Uh, it's even lower than a goldfish. Uh, that's just a provocation. But what that means is that we have extremely low attention spans today. What fuels that? Mobile phones. They're absolutely omnipresent. I'm going to share some facts. Uh, obviously, this group is educated on this particular topic really well, and you'll have a lot of those facts on the back of your head. But it's just to tell you that in an economy or in a uh, construct where attention is dwindling, there is this one microcosm called the mobile phone, which is omnipresent, which is there 24 hours, quite literally. Uh, people spend about five hours with their mobile phones on a daily basis. I'm sure that's longer than the most interesting person in your life. It's definitely longer than any, any other activity that you engage with. The second, people tend to check their mobile phones about 150 times a day. If you were to compare this to the time when you're not sleeping, that's for about 10 to 11 times a waking hour. Uh, there was a speech that I'd heard from someone that if you feel your phone is lost, just rewind to seven or 10 seconds back and what you were doing and that's where your phone's gonna be because you were so obsessed with it. So it's really something that is with you all the time and you're very engaged with that particular metric. Uh, I found this uh, really surprising. I don't do this, so I have a checkout time half an hour before I sleep, my phone kind of leaves me, but 78% people go to bed with their phone. So the last thing they do before they sleep is, is not wish their loved ones good night, it's actually just to see your screen and go to sleep. So in an attention deficit economy or a construct, you have this one entity that is with our consumers all the time. How do we leverage it in the best possible manner? One of the things about India is that while this is an omnipresent construct globally, for us, this phenomenon is just getting started. So if you were to look at how mobile phones have grown over the last five to six years in India, what uh, people tend to tell me who are more educated on this topic, that it's gonna be five to six times beyond this. I can't even imagine that, but uh, I couldn't imagine a lot of things which tech has brought to our lives. So if they were important today, they're gonna to be supremely important as we go ahead. So really, if there is a mechanism which is so prevalent and going to go up six to seven times, what's the best way for this marketing community to leverage this? And how are you going to do it differently to what you were doing, say, maybe a year back or three years back? Because if the consumer is changing so dramatically, the way you engage with them needs to change dramatically as well. So here's a proposed view. It's not a popular view, but it's a proposed view. So far, most of us have used advertising. And a lot of conversations that I... Uh, tend to get into is that marketing is equal to advertising and there are many ways to find a relevant audience and give them multiple messages till they convert. And I think there is definitely a role for that, but the argument for us as marketers is how do we look beyond advertising, especially with a framework that is so deeply integrated. We didn't have this earlier. When the rule books of marketing were written, you had a 30 second TVC. And the only way to increase awareness was mass advertising. Today, when you have a platform that is with your consumer, engaged very deeply, 24 by 7, there is a different way to play this game. Some of the facts around advertising and why I believe that it's uh, very important that we look beyond it is one, uh, we have very few apps on our phone. So if you look at your app screen, you know, even if there are greater than 10 to 15 apps, you don't use them that often. So quite honestly, the final choice set is going to be about 7 or 10 apps on that screen a screen that is really, really important. Uh, many, many people have started blocking advertising. So while we may come up with new constructs of advertising, you know, the erstwhile full-page ad when it was in the newspaper construct, and today when you look at your newspaper, they're like five newspaper uh, full-page ads till you come to the news, right? We find that funny when it's someone else's medium. That's the same thing that's happening to us. Every time you open a website, the first thing that you see is an ad and not the content. And more and more consumers are going to not like that. I, be, I remember being in a meeting where someone was telling me we have a new ad format where the cross symbol on the ad is not on the top right, it's on the bottom left. So at least for two seconds, consumers will try and figure out how they need to close that ad and that's how they'll engage with it, right? And that's a very uh, big advertising house, very big content strategy, but those are really not ways in which we can build engagement. You can interrupt, maybe distract, but that's not how you'll build your brand and engage with consumers. And the last one is, uh, and uh, I always use this with folks like you who are much younger than me, look at your own life, right? Which was the last time you saw a piece of advertising and changed your behavior towards a particular product? It's really what the product does and what your consumers say about it. So the best way to use the mobile is to 
definitely engage in terms of advertising. There's definitely a role for that. But really, the greater piece is to look beyond. To look at if there is something that is so deeply entrenched into the life of our consumers, how do we as marketing professionals engage with that platform, with that device, and not with the spec of that device, which is advertising? So really, my push for you is that when you go back and look at your businesses and look at uh, your means, ways of engaging with your customers, Look at the mobile phone as a more holistic construct than just an advertising construct. What I'm going to do now is share some examples. Uh, the brands that I've picked, uh, obviously there's Uber because I believe very strongly in this approach and we do a lot of work on this. The other brands that I've picked are more general. They're large brands. And that is not to say that other brands are not doing this. The only reason I've picked large brands is that in an audience like this, it's very easy to relate to it. And a lot of, it would be, and a lot of you would be consumers of those brands. So it is easy for you to look at that example and then uh, leverage it back for your own business. So the first one, I believe that to truly leverage the power of the mobile, to truly look beyond advertising, we have to leverage the mobile so that it seamlessly fits in the product experience. It's, it plays a role in making sure that the consumption of your product is enhanced. And I'm going to take you to three examples, and most of you would have experienced this, to give you how brands are thinking about that. How brands are going beyond advertising and thinking of how to leverage the mobile to deliver the product experience. Uh, how many of you have heard of Amazon Go? Some hands. How many of you like standing in that shopping line and waiting for your bill to be uh, built out? And That's the worst part of a shopping experience, right? You love the part where you discover products, go try them on, and then you're ready to go, and then you see this huge line where people are just standing on an aisle and they're waiting to get built. So deep consumer insight, if they have their mobile phone with them, the ability to change that narrative is very, very high. So when you look at redefining retail, it's not about sharing with them which is the latest fashion trend on their mobile phone. It is leveraging the mobile phone to enhance the retail experience. So go beyond what advertising could have done in terms of awareness. Look at that phone as a carrier of things that enable the shopping experience to get better. The second is Netflix. Uh, I was watching this documentary on Manchester City, All or Nothing, and it's a longish documentary, and not all of us get time to watch it. And one of the things I loved about that experience is every time I stopped and I went back to Netflix, that was the screen that came in front of me. That's where they asked me to start. So they have a non-advertising model. So it completely turned it on its head and built a completely content-led construct. But the way they've defined the user experience and how the mobile phone can play on it makes it very, very interesting for consumers to engage. I found that feature super exciting, and uh, I believe uh, YouTube has it in the States, not yet here, but that's definitely something that enhances the mobile experiences and makes it a lot richer. The last one is Starbucks. Uh, one of the pieces about Starbucks, the only thing that is disgruntling is the line for ordering, and especially if you were to go during lunch or the regular coffee breaks in an office building where everyone's over there, it makes it really difficult. They have this really cool feature where you can order on your phone, and by the time you get there, your coffee is ready. So again, how do you leverage it beyond advertising to put a feature in place which increases the chances of consumption, which reduces the cognitive load, and makes it a lot easier for the consumers to engage with your brand? I've picked these three examples so that you can experience them as customers and then look at your own business and say, how do I leverage the mobile phone? What extra can it do for me in the purchase construct, in the way I experience the product, in the way I want to build out the customer journey and the problems it can solve beyond just awareness? The next one is reducing the cognitive load during purchase. One of the keys around uh, building habit is that every time the consumer wants to buy you, or consumer, you're there. Uh, traditional companies used to stay within an arm's length. There used to be a huge focus towards distribution. Now that distribution is kind of reduced as a challenge because of the internet and because of Amazon, the real key challenge is how do you reduce the number of times a consumer needs to buy your product? How do you reduce the number of times a consumer will reevaluate whether you're better than every other option that she gets? And one piece that is really gaining ground is subscriptions. So as you look at building your model, I believe uh, today 15% of all people who uh, do e-commerce on the net have some subscription model attributed to them. And I feel going forward, this is really going to increase because when consumers need to make a lot of choices, they start making lesser choices. If you come here, uh, for example, let's play this game, right? If you come here and all seats are available, 
That's a lot of cognitive load, right? Suddenly you're going to, should I sit here, should I sit there? Who's going to sit? If there's only one seat available, that makes it a lot easier. That's what just happened to me. So I was like, very clear. Okay, one seat's available, I can go and sit there. So similarly, how do you reduce the cognitive load, and especially when it comes to usage and purchase? How many of you are Amazon Prime members? Right? And if I were to ask you specifically what Amazon Prime does, some of you will be able to articulate it. Most of you will be like, it just takes care of everything. I know delivery will be faster. I know some of the prices will be faster. It just, it's just easier. Right? I don't have to think about this multiple times. We did the same thing with Uber. Uh, one of the challenges we face is that the pricing, especially during peak cars, is variable because it's a two-sided marketplace. Right? If you don't have enough driver partners on the platform, then the rider needs to pay a lot more money. If there are too many riders, then the uh, driver partner doesn't get their income. So we launched this, I think, just today in five cities in the US where every user can just buy a pass and they're guaranteed a certain price for their travels. So you don't have to worry about, this is the price I'm paying right now, and what's the price that's going to be when I'm coming back? Or I can plan my travel budget for the entire month uh, knowing that Uber's got that covered. So just how do you build the mobile phone and the entire construct and the experience around it, which enables you to drive consumption over a longer period of time than looking at advertising or looking at push messaging or ads that are difficult to close to try and build that engagement? One of the things that we push for very hard, and you saw that in the Netflix example as well, how do you build it in the product? So what is it that you learn about the customer through AI? What is it that you learn about the customer behavior on what they do on your platform to make the app experience better? And to me, that is really the key in terms of driving consumption and pushing this. Uh, can we play the videos of working? It's a new beginning that starts with a familiar question. Where to? It's a question you ask yourself every day. And now it will kick off countless trips in cities around the world and make it easier than ever to find the right ride. So all that's left to do is hop in and go. Because when you start with where you want to be, you're already on your way. Thank you. The reason I love this feature is that if you look at uh, the number of users around the world who use Uber, and the fact that you're willing to take the chance that on the first moment where you pick the ride, you're going to change the interface. That's huge, right? But the thing that gave us a lot of confidence was that's what our riders wanted. When you're looking to get out of your house at 8 a.m. in the morning to, to your work, you don't want to say where you're standing at that point in time. You just want to put, where do I have to go? And that little switch, that little piece of making the customer experience better, that particular thing that makes the customer experience more seamless, really goes a long way in driving adoption makes the experience a lot better. And I wanted to give you that example because it's so simple. It's so first up. It's a lot of things that we can do in a lot of businesses that we adopt. The second one is a really good feature, which is uh, driver destinations. Uh, a lot of you may not be aware of this, but once the driver partner starts, they actually don't get to know which destination they're going to. So they just trust the app. You get in, and once you get in, they know that this is the destination. So what that does for them is that they start their day at their home, and then they're traveling all across the city, and then they need to get back, right? Because it's very difficult for them to conjure a ride right up, or they need to stop their rides and then drive all the way back home without a ride in case this feature doesn't exist. So the feature we built out was when you're ready to end your day, when you say that, okay, I've had enough number of trips, this is what I want to do, and I want to get back, there's a feature which says that put, the, put your home as a destination, and all trips that are heading towards that direction, you're only going to get those trips. Now, if you're a driver partner on Uber, and one of the pieces that we have is around flexibility, your own time, your ability to manage your own schedule, that's a fantastic feature to have. Because you don't want to be stuck in the other corner of the city, not knowing how you're going to get back or drive all the way without earning any money. So my push is that when you're thinking of the mobile phone, think of it as greater than advertising first. Think of it as how you can enable the experience of consumption to get better how you can think of that experience to become more seamless. The basics of the genesis of it doesn't change. 
I remember uh, when I got into the tech world, a lot of uh, what marketing people and advertising people discuss mostly is targeting options and insights for communication. One of the things that a lot of these companies are doing well is that the marketing team is not focusing on communication concepts. They're focusing on the customer journey. They're focusing that if the mobile phone is integral to how the consumer lives, what's the best way to integrate it in the customer journey? So a lot of it is moving around how we enable the customer to interact with our product using this omnipresent uh, piece called the mobile phone. So two key words before I get into some pieces if you need to advertise what we should be doing. So first, reduce the cognitive load. Everything that we do as marketing folks should go in a construct which says that how do I enable our consumers to consume or use our products using lesser and lesser cognitive skills and abilities? Because there are so many things for a consumer to think about. The last thing you want to do for them is to think about your product. Right? Make it seamless. Make that experience so seamless. Keep pushing at it that it just becomes a natural part of their existence. It becomes the default option that they trust because that is what brands do. We, were, we existed to simplify choice. And with the mobile phone, I think the ability to do that is much higher. The second one is build joy in interactions. Every time they interact with you on this mobile platform, let it not be that ad which doesn't have a click button. Because while you would have got attention for those next two seconds, I know a lot of folks have told me that I was served this ad which I could not shut. I'm never going to consume that product because it disrespected my time and the way I looked at it. So very, very important for us to move from intrusion to creating joy. And the way to do that is to build in experiences that fructify that driver partner who's on the other side of the city, gets a trip to go home, earns on his way back, would love that experience. So what do you do if you need to advertise? And what's the role of advertising in today's world? I think there are two pieces. One, we were compelled to generate awareness around product usage when consumers were not as aware about products. But as you can see with multiple cases, right, whether it is Geo, whether it's Netflix, whether it's Uber, whether it's Amazon, not many of these guys used advertising when they kicked off. It was their experience that enabled that to build in. So while it's important at the awareness stage, I think as we look at uh, consumption and as we look at our uh, sets of consumers and move them from choice to habit to advocacy, it's really important to push the storytelling narrative and not the advertising narrative. I'm going to share three examples. Uh, the hashtag we use internally is acts, not ads. What consumers are more and more interested about is what is it that you do for me? What is it that you do for the society? How do you entertain and engage me on the mobile phone rather than deliver plain vanilla advertising? We can start with the first one, which is the ice cream piece. I don't know how many of you saw it, but I'll give you some commentary on that. Uber Eats brings to you the world's first anti-aging ice cream, a revolutionary recipe that works on eight signs of aging and rejuvenates your skin from within. Crafted with deliciously smooth and creamy dark chocolate, feeling young is just a bite away. So how many of you have ordered that on Uber Eats? So that was an April Fool's prank for us. Uh, we are the number four brand. Uh, very difficult for us to break through the clutter. So you need to give something exclusive on your platform. I think 10,000 people registered, and then we gave them a very nice coupon to buy a lot of desserts on on Uber Eats, but very different from that we have deserts at 20% off, right, which is something that happens all the time. So really, really important to have landmark pieces when you're looking to build awareness because that's what people will engage on when it comes to the internet. The second one is a, is a really, really special one for me. Uh, it happened about a year and a half back when uh, we looked at our driver partners and we had this conversation with them. And one of the pieces that they always came back to us with is that uh, the reason I'm driving is to have secure a better future for my family especially my children. And so on Father's Day, we played this piece out, and we played it across uh, all of our GL centers, and we were able to send it out to our driver partners because we have a one-on-one -on -one connect with them on the mobile phone. It's a long piece of content, but uh, when you see it, you'll realize why it impacts the relationship with, which is so transactional otherwise, in a very meaningful manner. Can you play the Father's Day video, please? <laughs>
মানে ছোটবেলা থেকে তো মা নেই যখন পড়াশোনা শেষ করলাম তখন রিলেটিভরা বলল কি পড়াশোনা করে লাভ নেই বিয়ে দিয়ে দেওয়া উচিত আর ঠিক তখনই বাবা সবাইকে চুপ করে দিয়ে বলল কি না ওটা ওর ডিসিশন ও যেটা করবে সেটাই ওর প্রায়োরিটি বাবা আমার হিরো যেটা <laughs> কিন্তু বাবা যেটা চায় যে আমি আইএস অফিসার হব আর ডেফিনেটলি আমি সেটা বাবার জন্য করব না না একদম না বাবাকে তো কোনো স্টারি দেওয়া যাবে না বাবা তার থেকে অনেক বড় मैं बहुत सारे स्टार्स दूंगी जितने वो काउंट भी नहीं कर पाए यहां पर आए रखे सुपरस्टार आउट ऑफ फाइव I think that's that's one of the proudest pieces of work we did because it just changes the equation and you know reframes how everyone's the same irrespective of what profession you do. The last one is how do you uh, so one of the quotes we have internally is that you know we do a million trips every day and a one in a million happens to us every day. So instead of again doing advertising that is push based is is intrusive how do you take real stories that happen on our platform and share that with our riders and driver partners so the last piece is of ruchir ruchir is actually someone who works in uh, i think now in bombay and maybe in bangalore works for tata click i'll show you that piece it's it's him so that's the rider who takes our platform and just how he interacts with us and how it's enabled him we have the last act please i started coding at 15 I spoke to machines in zeros and ones. They replied in zeros and ones. My conversation with technology was a sum of these digits. My conversations with people were a sum of doubts and uncertainties. How will you manage all alone in the city? How will you travel around? What if you have to go somewhere? And one day, something changed. Uber. The zeros and ones, they had a voice. Uber go selected. Finding your ride. हाँ भैया आप नीचे लॉबी के सामने आ जाइए मैं नीचे आता हूँ योर यूबर इज अराइविंग देन द क्वेश्चन चेंज आई सी दर्ल्ड इन वॉइस सम आर न्यू एंड स्ट्रेंज सम फॉन्ड एंड फेमिलियर एंड देर आर वंस दैट डोंट लीव माई साइड Where to get your ride? Four minutes. Confirm your pickup at Sangeeta Apartment. Get to know 4, your driver. 16 p.m. arrival. The world I see is full of possibilities and great adventures. There are obstacles too, but there's always a way around, isn't there? My name is Richard Falodia. If seeing is believing, then I believe in a world that moves forward. So that's it. Thank you so much. Uh really appreciate the time and patience that you showed. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed uh, Mr. Gupta. Unfortunately, we do have a paucity of time so we may not be able to take some questions. Oh, no, no, no. But I'm going to request you to please remain on the stage and I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Shawneel Charles, the senior vice president of Digital with Times Network to please come on stage and present a token of gratitude. And let's have a huge round of cheer one more time ladies and gentlemen for Mr. Sanjay Gupta. Thank you, Joanne. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. Thank you.